Let us understand the exponential decay with the help of an excellent example. So we have a cup of coffee, it's kept on the table. The temperature is cooling and ultimately it will cool down towards the room temperature. Just understand the concepts of exponential functions, decay specifically with the help of this particular example. We'll also find the decay rate and sketch a graph of the given function. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. Here is an excellent test problem for you. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. So we are going to take first three questions. First part is, how do you know that it is an example of exponential decay? Well, clearly, in the given equation, you can see we have capital T, which gives you the temperature at any small, any time, which is represented by small t, 80 times half to the power of t over 10 plus 20. So this factor is what is being multiplied by each time, correct? So that is the factor which results into exponential decay, right? So in this equation, how do you know that it is an example of exponential decay? We know because every time it gets multiplied by half, right? So, so the factor half represents exponential decay. Specifically, it says that in 10 minutes, the temperature cools to half. That is what it means. Every 10 minutes, it becomes half of what it was. Correct. That is all you have to answer. Question number two here is, what is the initial temperature of the coffee? So to calculate the initial temperature, just substitute zero for the time t in minutes. So we get 80 times half of to the power of 0 over 10, right, plus 20. So anything to the power of 0 is 1, so we get 80 plus 20. And clearly that is 100. And the units are degrees Celsius. So do not forget to include the units for temperature in your answer. Right? Now, question number 3 is, Explain how the equation would change if the coffee cooled faster. So key word here is faster cooling. So can you tell me what can be changed to cool faster with reference to the equation? Well, faster means we are saying it becomes half in 10 minutes. So the temperature should cool down to half in less than 10 minutes, right? So we are looking for a cooling factor which is like t over 10 to change to let's say t over something else where this value of n should be less than 10 right and of course greater than 0 right? so that is what is to change so time it takes to cool down to half of its temperature should be less than 10 right it could be 9 8 7 6 any number so that is what the real answer would be perfect. So I hope so far everything is easy to understand. Now let's move on to the next question on graphing. Well in case you want to learn from me as many students do and get very good marks you can send an email on the address given. You can also contact us on our website for latest updates. So I do have many videos related to this topic my YouTube channel has many of them absolutely free for students. Watch some more from this playlist. Okay, great. Now, let's look into question number four, which is sketch the graph of the function. Right. Now, when you want to sketch the graph, what are the key things to look into? That is what we'll first discuss. So, let me rewrite the equation itself, which is temperature at any instance of time time in minutes 
is given as 80 times half of t over 10 plus 20. Correct. So, what we just calculated is the initial temperature and we just did a calculation that when t is 0, in that case it was 100 degrees Celsius. Correct. So, to begin with, the temperature starts at 100. You get the idea. So, mark this point on the graph itself. So, well, you can always write the title, right? So, the coffee temperature, let's say, right? Versus time. Okay. And time here, T, is in minutes, right? So, we just label that. And temperature is capital T which is in degrees Celsius. Perfect. So, there you go. So, this is the first part, right? The second part in exponential equation is to look into horizontal asymptote, right? This is very critical. So, that is when, let's say, T is approaching infinitely large value, right? If T is approaching infinitely large value, in that case, what happens? Well, in that case, the capital T, the temperature. So, this part approaches 0, right? This part approaches 0, and so we get value of 20, right? Because half to the power of very large value, since half to the power of, let's say, infinitely large value approaches 0, right? You keep multiplying by half. Reduce, 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 reduce. So, that part becomes 0, right? Do you see that part? So, basically, this part approaches 0 and you are left with 20. So, at 20, we have a horizontal asymptote. You get the idea. So, I am sketching this line very bold just to give you an idea that this is a very critical part, right? So, ultimately, the coffee temperature will settle down to 20 degrees Celsius. This could be the room temperature you, be, you to begin with. You understand, right? This could be the room temperature. Correct. So, we have starting point of 100 and the end point which is approaching not at 20, right? It will never be 20, correct? Okay. Now, the question is that we should have some more points in between, correct? So, we know that it is half every 10 minutes, right? So, why not to take some temperatures and plot some values for T equals to, for example, 10 itself, right? So, if I put 10 here, I get 80 and half to the power of 10 over 10, which is, as you can see, half of 80, right, plus 20. So, that gives you a value of 40 plus 20, right, which is 60, right. So, so at 10, we expect a temperature of 60. Now, you can also calculate value at 20, correct. So, if you do that, then be like half to the power of square, right, 20 by 10 plus 20. So, half of 40 is 20, so we get 20 plus 20, which is 40. Do you see that? How it keeps falling, right? So, at 20, it is this. So, you can easily see the trend, right, and calculate some more. You can make a table of values for this particular thing and then connect these points, right? The graph, I should say, should be exponential, right? Means, it should be a smooth curve which comes like this, right? And it is approaching the line which we are saying horizontal asymptote. Makes sense? So, that is how you have to sketch the graph of this particular function, right? So, I hope the concept is clear, right? So, let me show you the graph which we did with the graphing calculator. So, so it should start from here, right? So, no, nothing on the left side of this. Since we know that time t, which is in minutes, is always starting from 0 in this case. And you can see that this 20 is the horizontal asymptote. It should be marked clearly in the graph, right? So, so we say coffee temperature. Does make sense to you, right? So, these are a few points which you could calculate, correct? So, mm -hmm. what you could do is make a table of values, correct? So, make a table of values and... Um, Use the formula, calculator, whatever you want to do, and write down uh, different temperatures at which you can find the, make a table like this, correct? So, that is what it is. 
So write down the temperature time. This is time in minutes, right? Let me write here like this. Time in minutes, correct? And temperature in degrees Celsius, perfect. So you can put the time like 0, 10, 20, and so on. Makes sense, correct? And then inf approaching infinity. That is what we did. And at 0, when you plug in 0, it is 80 plus 20, so it gets 100, right? And then half of 80 is 40 plus 20 is 60, correct? So likewise, one fourth is like 20 plus 20 is 40, correct? And this is approaching 20. You get the idea. So that is how you'll make a table, do the calculations just as we did here, right? So I showed you how to do the calculations. Then finally, sketch your graph as shown here, well labeled, right? Do not do anything on left side of T. Important thing here is that T is greater than or equal to zero. Keep that in mind. Correct. Well, I hope the concept of sketching graph is absolutely clear. Now let's move on to the next topic, which is decay rate. How do you find decay rate from the given equation? The question 5 here is, find the decay rate of the function t of t, right? So, we are given this particular function, which is 80 times half of t over 10 plus 20, right? Now, when you want to find the decay rate, we actually rewrite the equation in a different form, right? So, let me show you that part. Mm -hmm. So we'll say, well, the temperature could also be written as 80 times 1 minus R, right? So that is the decay rate to the power of T, right, plus 20. Now, we saw when T is equal to 10, in that case, the temperature was 60, correct? Right? We just calculated this. Now, Substituting this value of 60 here, what do you get? Well, we get 60 equals to 80, 1 minus r to the power of 10, because t was 10, right? We get this. So, this equation, we can solve for r now, the only unknown, right? So, 60 minus 20 equals to 80, 1 minus r to the power of 10. So, that is 40. Let's divide by 80. So, we get this as 1 minus r to the power of 10, right? Okay. Let's take it to the other side. So, what we have here is, is 1 minus, let me write like that only, half equals to 1 minus r to the power of 10. So, let's take the 10th root, right? of half, which is 0 0.5 root 10, it becomes equals to 1 minus r, and so r is equal to 1 minus 10th root of half. Do you see that part? So that is how we are going to find the decay rate r, right? So it is 1 minus 10th root of half, right? So find the 10th root of half. So, it gives you a value of 0 0.0669. Correct? So, use calculator to find. So, that is the value of R. This is the decimal value. Correct? Decay factor should always be given in percent, right? So, remember this, or decay rate in percent. So, to convert this to percent, we get R equals to 0 0.0669 times 100, correct? So, that will give you 6.69, we can say approximately 6.7 percent. You get the idea. So, convert this to percent to write down the decay factor. So, decay factor here is 6.7 percent. Make sense? 
So that is a very critical part of this particular solution. And uh, this is where most students lose marks. So I hope now the concept is clear, right? So we actually wrote solution to all these, right? And uh, many points to consider and this decay factor or decay rate, I should say, right? Decay rate was calculated in percent. Very important to understand, correct? So with that, we have answered all this. Now the next question for you is to find the equation from the given graph, right? Or also express the transformation of the function from the given graph. Or if I am given the equation, explain the transformation. So relating transformed equation and the graph is the next topic. And here is a very good example for you to explore. You can watch my playlist to look into the solution of similar questions, right? I hope it makes sense. Well, in case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Feel free to write your comments, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, it would be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.